at uh, Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? In other words, is it right for a man to divorce his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, uh, Have you not read uh, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? It's something we've got to remember in the, the perverted society we live in these days and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain, or they too, shall be one flesh. Therefore they are no more twain, in other words, they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you, or permitted you, to put away your wives, but from the beginning... It was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, Save we accept they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Then were they brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. In other words, the disciples told them off. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, or permit or allow little children to come, uh, says here, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to, uh, to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. This is the reason, the way that we've got to come to the Lord. We've got to come in all our weakness, in all our dependence, in all our need. Come to the Lord for salvation. That we might receive forgiveness for our sins. This is what we need. We need desperately forgiveness for our sins. Without that forgiveness, we're heading down to hell, my friend. And God does not want that for you. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now what is repentance? It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God promises you everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be you this afternoon. If you come by faith, if you'll understand your sinful condition before the Lord, that is repentance, a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. This is what God wants for each and every one of us. That our soul will be saved, that we're on our way to heaven. Why go down to hell when there's absolutely no need, my friend? You need salvation, you need it now. You need to get right with God. You need to have forgiveness for your sins. Otherwise, at the moment of death, you'll be in hell. God does not want that for you, my friend. He wants us all to be in heaven with himself. And this is why we've got to come like, become like little children, to receive the salvation of God through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who loved us enough to die upon the cross for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried but praise God the third day he rose again according to the scriptures he wants to save your soul this afternoon my friend 
Will you come to Christ for your salvation? Will you put your faith in Him, who for no is life eternal? So it says here, the Lord Jesus Christ laid his hands on the little children and departed thence. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? See, this man came and he thought that he could have eternal life by doing something good. There are many people in this world, they think they can do good works to earn brownie points with God or somehow impress God. It won't work. You've got to come by the Lord Jesus Christ or you can't come at all. He that hath the Son hath life, that is spiritual and eternal life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. The question is, do you have the Son of God? Have you put your faith in Him? Oh, you, you are a believer in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way of life. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Prince of Life. And they crucified the Prince of Life. They put him to death. But that was all in the divine foreknowledge and uh, eternal counsels of the Father. See, the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. He wants to be your Saviour this hour, my friend. Will you come to Christ for your salvation? Will you put your faith in Him and become a child of God? There's no salvation apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. You've got to come to Him. Yes, it says here, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. And that's true. There's only one good, and that is God. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he is God. He's God in a body. God manifest in the flesh. See, one of his titles is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. To think that God came down and humbled himself so much that he took upon himself a body, that in that body he by the grace of God should taste death for every man upon the cross. And God wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. God wants to give you life, spiritual and eternal life. That life is in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said, that's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have that spiritual and eternal life that can only come through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ? The one who died upon the cross can be your Saviour this hour, my friend. He wants to save your soul. Make no mistake about it. He wants to save your soul. He doesn't want to have to punish you for all of eternity in the lake of fine brimstone where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. God has made provision for your salvation, my friend. In the person of his Son, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. When have your sins been taken away? Have you been cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins? That blood still has the power to wash your sins away, my friend. Will you come to Christ this hour? Will you put your faith in him? Will you believe upon him? See, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, that is, Jesus Christ, to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. If you're prepared to come in repentance toward God this afternoon, acknowledge that you're a sinner before God, agree with God that you are a sinner, and then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. This is what God wants. He doesn't want to have to punish you, my friend. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be in heaven with himself for all of eternity. But we cannot be there apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. This man who came to the Lord Jesus Christ thought that he could do good things to get to heaven. It'll never work. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, that is salvation is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if we could get to heaven by doing good things, we'd be boasting, saying, look what I did to get here to heaven. There's no way we can do that, because there's only one way to heaven. That is through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who loved us enough to die upon the cross. He sacrificed himself for you and for me. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness 
Oh, see, have you received forgiveness for your sins? Are you a child of God? Have you put your faith in Him? There's only one way to heaven, as I said, and the Lord Jesus Christ, He's it. He said, I am the way. This is John 14 and verse 6. I am the way, not a way. He is the way, the exclusive way to heaven, my friend. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. In other words, to heaven, but by me. You've got to come to Christ to be saved. If you don't put your faith in Christ, you'll never be in heaven. There are not many roads that lead to heaven, my friend. There's only one road, and that's the narrow road that leads to heaven. But when we're born in this world, we're born on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction. If you like, we're on the highway to hell. God wants us to get off of that highway, that broad road. He wants us to get onto the narrow road that leads unto heaven. And the only way we can get off that broad road, or the highway to hell, if you like, is through the Lord Jesus Christ. John 10 verse 9, I am the door, the Lord Jesus Christ said. He that entereth in, uh, I am the door. If we enter in through the door, the Lord Jesus Christ, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Are you saved this afternoon? Are you a child of God? Have you received forgiveness for your sins? The only way of forgiveness is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the one that you've got to come to know this hour, my friend. If you don't come to know the Lord Jesus Christ before you leave this earth, you're in big trouble because you're heading for the judgment of God. You're heading for hell and the lake of fire for eternity. And God does not want that for you. Again, I repeat, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. And he says here, when this man came to him wanting to know if he could do something good to get to heaven. He said unto him, uh, Yes, there is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. And that includes abortion and euthanasia, my friend. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not be a false witness. In other words, don't tell lies. Honour thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily or truly I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So this man here, he wanted to have eternal life, but he wanted to get it by doing good things. And as I said, we'll never ever get there by good works. We'll only get there through the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. The crucifixion of Christ is the only way that you and I can get to heaven. His death, burial and resurrection, and His precious blood that was shed on the cross, in whom we have redemption, through His blood even, the forgiveness of sin. So this man was sorrowful because he had many possessions. You know, we're going to leave it all behind. No matter how many things we have in this, on this earth, no matter how many toys we have, how many possessions we have, we're going to leave it all behind. The only thing we'll take with us if we die in our sins without Christ as our Saviour, the only thing we're going to take with us is our sins. But God wants to forgive you of all of your sins this hour, my friend. This afternoon could be the best day, this day could be the best day of your entire life. If you come to faith in Christ, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God, if you receive forgiveness for your sins, that forgiveness is all bound up in a person. It's got nothing to do with doing good things. I'm not discouraging you from doing good things. That's great to live a good life and, you know, 
be nice to our neighbours and all the rest of it, but I want to just remind you that it won't get us to heaven. Good works will never ever get us into heaven. We've got to come through the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. And it's his work that can avail. His work is the only work that can get us into heaven. But we've got to respond to the love of God. Yes, we read that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Are you saved this afternoon? He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. Here's the reason, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See, we, we've condemned ourselves by our wicked behaviour, by our sinful behaviour, and our wickedness before the Lord. We're the enemies of God by our wicked works in our minds. We need to become the friends of God. And the only way we can become the friends of God is through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. And your right response to that. So you can just walk past and say, she'll be right, mate, it's all good, I'm good, and all these crazy things we say, but in reality, it's not all good. It's all bad, because we're heading down to hell, by default, because of our sin. But God wants to forgive you of all of your sin, this hour, my friend. He wants to give you a new life in Christ. He wants you to be born again. This is so essential, so urgent. We need to be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's absolutely essential. If you're not born again, you'll never be able to enter into heaven. And you've got to be born by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within your body. And then, only then, can you please God. You can live for God then. You know, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you're not saved, you cannot please God. You might think you're a good living person and all the rest of it, but that will never ever get us to heaven. Even if you're the best living person in the whole wide world, that will never get you to heaven. You've got to come and put your faith in Jesus Christ. You've got to put your faith in Christ to be in heaven. Because he's the only saviour. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So if you want to be saved, you want to be in heaven, you have to come God's way. And God's way is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself for us. The Lord Jesus Christ loved us so very, very much that he sacrificed himself upon the cross. He said, no man taketh my life from me, I lay it down to myself, and, and I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. And so we need to understand the Lord Jesus Christ voluntarily laid down his life for you and for me. Not that we can work our way to heaven. There's no way that we can be good enough to get to heaven. Why? Because God's standard is perfection. And who's perfect? If you think you're perfect, you're crazy out of your mind. None of us are perfect. The only one who's perfect is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the one that you've got to come to know this afternoon as your saviour. Otherwise he'll be your judge. Who would you rather have, saviour or judge? Heaven or hell? It's up to you. If you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no sacrifice apart from Christ. And if you reject him, you've rejected everything. You need to come to Christ this afternoon. You need to put your faith alone in him. It says here, as it says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Because they're trusting in their riches. They're trusting in the things that they have, you know, the toys, all the possessions that we have. We live in a really materialistic sort of society, especially here in the land of Oz or wherever it is all over the world. You know, we think so much of our toys, so much of our car, you know, house, whatever it might be. What's that compared to your soul? You have a soul that leaves your body at the moment of death, my friend. 
And we're going to be somewhere. We're either going to be in heaven. We're either going to be in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ and our right response to his sacrifice, or we're going to be down in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell. He wants you to be in heaven. And that's why the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is he your Saviour? You need to make him yours personally. You need to get right with God yourself. No one else can do that for you. You have a responsibility before God. You know, the Word of God says, prepare to meet thy God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Yet God will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you believed upon him? Have you become a child of God? As I said before, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And when his disciples heard it, what the Lord Jesus Christ said about this camel, uh, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? They couldn't understand it. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So it means that there are some uh, rich people who do get saved. Maybe not many, but there are some. But mainly, they trust in their riches and therefore they think they're self-sufficient. And they say, well, I don't need God, I've got everything I need in this earth. You know, I've got all these possessions, all these toys, and I don't really need God. But, you know, we all need God. You see, we need to be saved. We need to have forgiveness for our sins. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Not that it's possible to gain the whole world, but there are people who are, you know, Elon Musk or whatever his name is, all these rich people, they think they've got it made. But if they're not saved, if they're not children of God, they've got nothing. They're going to leave all this stuff behind. You know, he who dies with the, rich, uh, with the most toys still dies. And we leave it all behind, my friend. We leave it all to our, you know, relations or whatever. We need to understand there's something more than gold. It's your precious soul that is valuable to God. God wants to save your soul, this other, my friend. He wants you to come to faith in Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved by the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why go on any longer? Knowing that we've sinned before God and we're heading down to hell. It's a hard pill to swallow, isn't it? But it's the truth. I'm not here to beat around the bush and waste my time or yours. I'm going to tell you the truth. We're heading down to hell by default. God does not want that. He wants you to be in heaven. If you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be in heaven. And that's exactly what God wants. He wants us all to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. The truth is found in the Word of God, the Bible. It's also found in a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then answered Peter and said unto them, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily or truly I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. I'm sure that you want everlasting life. Surely you want everlasting life instead of an eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone. As I said before, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Oh my friend, God does not want that for you. He wants you to be in heaven with himself for all eternity. But we cannot be there apart from the person of Jesus Christ. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But many that are uh, first shall be last, he said, and the last shall be first. Moving on now to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, 
which went out early in the morning to hire labourers into his vineyard, and when he had agreed with the labourers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went about, out about the third hour, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out, and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the labourers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came uh, that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And when they had received it, oh sorry, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the goodman of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and now has made us equal, uh, them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. In other words, they worked for hours and hours. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree uh, with me for a penny? Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. What does it mean? It means the invitation goes out to many. And the invitation in the gospel message is, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, Come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. God wants to take that burden of sin away from you. God wants to forgive you of all of your sins this afternoon. And if you come to Christ, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. It's all about the person of Christ, my friend. He's the one that I'm promoting here this hour. You've got to come to Christ to be saved. You've got to believe upon Him. You've got to put your faith in Him to receive everlasting life. And Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes. And they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge, in other words, to whip, and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. Then came to him his mother, or the mother of Zebedee's children, with her sons, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of it. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on my right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, I know not that uh, ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, but to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give but it shall be given to them of whom it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. 
but it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister or servant. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. See, the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins upon the cross of Calvary. Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to scriptures so that you and I could be in heaven. But we've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And they departed from Jericho and a great multitude followed him. And behold, two uh, blind men uh, sitting by the wayside when they heard that Jesus passed by cried out saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them. In other words, told them off because they should hold their peace. They wanted to be quiet. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Now you say, well, you're not blind. Well, obviously you're not blind if you were, uh, you know, in a car, driving a car, or, you know, on a scooter or on a bike or whatever, walking along without a stick or a, a dog, obviously. But we need to understand we are uh, spiritually blind before God. We need to be able to see. We need spiritual sight. And the only way we can receive that spiritual sight is if we're born again. If we come to faith in Christ, if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become God's children. For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So you've got to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be in God's family, to become a child of God. You won't be in God's family apart from that. And so the Lord Jesus Christ loved us enough to die upon the cross for you and for me. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So first up, we've got to understand that we are sinners. We've got to admit that before God. It's called repentance. It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then what you need to do, you need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul be saved. That's what God wants. He wants all of us to be with him for all eternity in heaven. But we cannot be there apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So stop trying to do good works to get to heaven. It will never work. You've got to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be you this afternoon. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. But as many as received him, that's Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Are you prepared to put your faith in the Son of God, the Saviour of the world? He's the one that wants to save your soul, this Ava, my friend. And if you come to him, if you put your faith in him, your soul will be saved. If you don't, your soul will remain in a lost condition and you'll be going down to hell still. That's how we're born. We're born as sinners in, into this earth and we're heading down to hell. God does not want that for you, my friend. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Just change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Wonderful thing to know that your soul is saved. You're at peace with God. And it's all because of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That can only take place if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you put your faith in Him, your soul 
will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is the promise of Almighty God to all those who put their faith in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, for their eternal redemption. The Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood upon the cross in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Have you received forgiveness for your sins? Are you on your way to heaven? Are you still on that broad road, the highway to hell? That road that leads down to hell. God does not want you to stay on it, my friend. He wants you to get off that road, enter through the door, the Lord Jesus Christ, as I said, said, I am the door by me if any man enter in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. You can be saved this afternoon, my friend, by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't leave it another second. We're heading down to hell. God does not want that. He wants us to get on the road to heaven by entering through the door. The Lord Jesus Christ can be your saviour this afternoon. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Will he be your saviour? Or will he have to be your judge? If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.